think of cognitive impairment usually in the setting of dementias or Alzheimer's. And so people forget how to use objects, they forget who people are, they forget how to do things. That's very different from cognitive impairment with multiple sclerosis. It's a much more subtle change in things like processing speed or information processing speed, so taking in information and being able to use it, being able to remember it, and then rem what we call episodic memory meaning forgetting what has happened. So it's not that they forget who people are, but they may not be able to come up with their name right away. It's not that they've forgotten that they had a meeting yesterday, they just may not have, know what happened at the meeting. And it tends to be more slow and progressive, a very, uh, what we call insidious onset. So you don't tend to necessarily see it um, occur really quickly. You can, you do see it with relapses, but most of the time it's coming on subtly such that people can write it off to other things. So I have young children, so I'm not sleeping well, or I'm really busy at work, so of course I'm forgetting things, or I'm getting older, so I need a calendar to remember things. So it can often be already affecting someone's life before it presents to us, because it's easy to say it's something other than MS that's causing the symptoms. What's unique about our clinic is that we actually have a MS cognitive clinic, which is um, specifically designed to assess and treat cognitive impairment and multiple sclerosis. So it's not in the same, uh, it's not happening in the same clinic where we address medications or their physical disability or other things that are going on secondary to their MS. We actually have a clinic that's solely dedicated to assessing where they might be struggling and how that's affecting their family and their work. So what we try to do is we come up with ways to compensate for the cognitive impairment. So I always use the example, it's like using a cane, but instead of using a cane to help with your walking, you're using a cane to help with your thinking. So we come up with techniques that the patients can implement, whether at home or at work, that can make their life easier by compensating for the trouble they're having. It's important to remember that MS does not affect intelligence. They're still the same person they were before, we just need to give them a bit of help in order to be able to do what they used to be able to do. We do have some interventional trials, both a medication as well as a computer program, to see if we can improve cognition over time, but we have not yet had the results of those studies, so we don't know if they've been positive yet. The treatment of MS occurs at a time when people are in the prime of their life in a sense. So they're just starting careers, they're just starting to start families. And MS patients are, on a, as a whole, very motivated to look after themselves. They're very motivated to say, what can I do to make this better? What partnership can we develop so that we are working as a team? And I think that's part of what motivates us is that we can see our patients want help, so we want to help them. Uh, I can also see, especially with cognitive impairment, how much of a toll it takes on patients. It's very invisible. It's an invisible symptom. So again, you can see someone using a cane to walk. You understand that they have a disability that they might need help with. But when you're having trouble with your memory or you're having trouble processing information, it's not easily visible to someone else. So they're less likely to make accommodations for you. So being able to help our patients stay working, being able to still participate in their lives fully is what's very important to us. It's interesting in the cognitive clinic where a lot of the times what I'm doing is validating what the people already feel. So they've already noticed these symptoms, but they think there's something wrong with them. So they think they're not as smart as they used to be, or that they are um, getting stupid, or that they're not being a good employer or not being a good spouse. So just sometimes identifying where they're struggling and realizing it's not them, it's from their MS, is very rewarding because it's a huge turning point for the patient to be able to say, oh, okay, now that I know what it is, I can deal with it. And then working through how we can make their life better and how they can sometimes make small changes to accommodate the trouble they're having is very rewarding for me.